Let's go to Canvas for a minute. One, I just wrote an announcement about the Analyze Quadratic Functions homework, namely that two things aren't working. One, the video is not showing up, and two, you don't really have to show any work. Um, to do that, you would upload to the, you would click on the show work button and then upload your work, but you get graded anyway. <coughs> so, I mentioned that in the problem, just do the homework the way you always do it and watch the class video first from module seven, because we did that during week seven. And here's the video, the class video right here about analyzing quadratic functions. And I uploaded the notes as well. Um, the solve quadratic equations with the quadratic formula, I also need to upload, and I will. All right, so let's do problem number one, because almost the entire class is having a terrible time with this, and not only that, but the online classes are having a terrible time, so I'm going to do it. All right, our first function So there are two, there are three people in the class who have already done this homework and they've all gotten A's on it. All right, so if you're one of those people, you obviously know how to do this, so you can actually tune out and go back to sleep. But the rest of us are going to have an opportunity to work on this right now. Number one. f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 22. All right, now we're being asked to, clearly the first answer there is find the vertex. So we're going to find the vertex, then the equation of the axis of symmetry. Then we're going to determine whether there is a maximum or a minimum value, and we're going to find the value, and then we're going to graph the function. Okay, so A, find the vertex. The vertex is the point HK. H is the X coordinate, K is the Y coordinate. Okay, now H has a wonderful little formula. I don't want you to complete the square unless you know how and you feel comfortable with it, which is what the book teaches for finding the vertex. I don't see any need to do that. Using the formula for H and then doing what I'm going to do is a much easier method. So negative B over two A, which means we better know what A and B are. A is going to be one, the one in front of the X squared, and eight is going to be B. B is 8. So H is going to equal negative 8 over 2A. I'm sorry, it's 2A. Negative B over 2A. So negative B over 2 times 1 is going to be negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. Now, I take negative four. I have to find the K now. Here's how you find K. You have to find H first. If you're going to use this method. K equals the number you get when you put H, this is H, in for every X. So that will be negative four 
squared plus eight times negative four plus 22, which will be positive 16 minus 32 plus 22. Now 16 minus 32 is negative 16 plus 22. So that answer will be positive 6. And so it looks like my vertex is going to be negative 4, positive 6. Does that look right to you? Well, I'm going to say it is, and I'm going to even put it in here. Let's do it. The vertex is ren negative four comma six and closed. Nice work. Yay! Okay, B, find the axis of symmetry. Now first, let's write this down. Negative 4, 6 is the vertex. B, find the equation, that's the right way to say it, the equation of the axis of symmetry. Okay, that's going to be, it's always x equals h. So the equation of the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 4, which is h. So x equals negative, uh, yeah, four, negative four, cool. Okay. Now, it, this wants to know if the parabola has a maximum point or a minimum point. Well, let's graph it. Now, do you need a calculator to graph it? Not really. F of X, if it's a, a, a function, quadratic functions that have highest power two, have the shape of a cupped up parabola or a cupped down parabola. A cupped up parabola, the vertex is going to be down here. So it's a minimum point. For a cupped down parabola, the vertex is up here. So it's a maximum point. Now they're asking for the maximum or the minimum value. First, I have to decide. In transformations, you learned that when there's a number in front of the leading term, you're going to have a, um, um, oh, oh. when there's a negative sign in front of the leading term, you're going to have a cup down parabola. But if the leading term is positive, you're going to have a cupped up parabola. The leading term is positive. So 
So, or therefore, yeah, ugly. Okay, try again. Always try again. There you go. A leading term is positive, so you're going to have a cupped up parabola, which means that your vertex is going to be a minimum point. And therefore K, the Y coordinate of the vertex, remember this is HK, K will be the minimum value. So, we now know that this parabola has a minimum value. The minimum value is whatever K is. K is six. Let's write it down up here. K is six. So I'm going to put a six in there. Correct. Now it says to graph the function. Let's see what kind of information we need. First, I choose the shape. It says click the graph, choose the tool. That tool. Then click the graph to plot the vertex. Now it's telling you plot the vertex. I need to go to negative four positive six and double check by looking up here. Negative four, positive six, right there. Click. Now what is it telling me? I need, click the graph to plot a point, another point, and I didn't find another point. I've got to find another point. Okay, well, all right, let's do that. It doesn't say it has to be special. I'm going to clear this, cancel, and I will come back after I calculate another point, any other point. Okay, so, yeah, here we are. Let's find another point. We have the vertex. Negative four, six. Now I need any other point. So how about letting X equal any number I want, or let's use the calculator. Simply because it's easier to find a point that's not a fraction. My trial is almost over. I don't think I'm going to buy it. If it's cheap, I will, but it's probably not. All right, here we go. Let us see. Now I need to see. Oh, come on. There. Okay. x squared plus 8x plus 22. So clear. Oh, I know what to do. We'll move it over here. There now. Okay. x squared plus 8x plus 22. And might as well graph it to see what it looks like. Yep, there's the vertex and it is cupped up. 
Um, so let's find one other point by clicking on second and then clicking on graph. We have all the points we could ever want. It's just a matter of picking one. So, uh, I also have to think in terms of what I can graph though. This point will not fit on the graph. Let's find one that will. All right, we've already used negative four, six. How about negative five, seven? Doesn't have to be that, it just looks good. Negative five, seven. So now I'm going to graph. I choose the quadratic function tool. It says go to the vertex. Then it says choose one other point. Okay, negative five, positive seven. Click. I'm gonna save it. Then I'm gonna check my answer. Fantastic. We've done it. OK, now I'm going to cheat because I'm the teacher. I get this wonderful little box up here. That way I can know my answers. Right away. What I want to do. Now first, let me show you. Oh, none of them are asking for the X intercepts. So, oh, shut up. Causing me trouble. Yes, I want to go back. Okay. So what happens when you've got fractions? Oh, dear. We'll take a look at Between each integer, you have the graph divided into quarters. So here, for instance, we have one and one fourth, one and one half, one and three fourths, two. So we can actually do fractions. When the graph is made for you to be able to do fractions, graphing is not a problem. All right. So let me see if there's anything other than this kind of problem where you're asked for the vertex. Yes, there's mine with the video that never showed up. OK, so use this video. We have not worked a problem where there's a different coefficient before the X. Is there a way that you can work this problem? I'd love to. Thank you. Are you sure you want to leave? No, I don't. Now it'll think I'm a good girl. Meanwhile, this is how you get to show work. Now, I don't know. Usually, the way it's supposed to work is you can't see your grade until you show work. But it's not working that way. You see, if you have a, um, a tablet, you can just do your work here. If you don't have a tablet, you can upload a video, a, a, a picture. Let's upload a picture. Pictures. How about, don't forget, is that cute? And then you can save it. All right, so now we'll do this. Um, Our f of x, this is number three. Our f of x is okay. If I were finding the x intercepts then I would pull out a common factor. But it's not really necessary here. You want to do that when you've got the vertex, when you're looking for the vertex. 
although ought to have the same answer. But anyway, A is two, B is six. The first thing we're being asked is to find the vertex. See, I can check my answers right away. That's kind of why I did this. So we would take less time. Okay, so A. We're looking for HK and H equals negative B over 2A. So I will have negative 6 over 2 times 2. So I will have negative 6 over 4, which is negative 3 over 2. And if you don't know that, then your trusty calculator, if you clear, or second quit. If you say negative 6 divided by 4, math, frac, enter, it will give you the fraction in lowest terms. It's good to double check because you're expected to always give fraction answers in lowest terms. Okay, now, um, find the axis of symmetry. Oh, we haven't found K yet, so that's not gonna do any good. K is going to equal F of negative three over two, which is the code for Hey, put negative three over two. Into that function, put it in for X. So two times negative three over two squared plus six times negative three over two plus two. Okay. Well, we can do it by hand or we can do it on the calculator. Let's do it on the calculator so we can also math frac the answer and hopefully get negative five over two. Let's see. Okay. Here we go. Two parentheses, negative three divided by two, parentheses closed, squared, plus six parentheses, negative three divided by two, close, plus two, enter. Negative 2.5, you're supposed to answer with fractions, so we're going to math frac. Math, enter, enter, negative five over two. So now we know. Since normally when you work these, you can't see the answers in advance. Oh, so I should actually write this out so I can put it in the correct way, don't you think? Let's mark that out and say negative three over two comma negative five over two. That will be the vertex, that will be the answer to A. Now B, the equation of the axis of symmetry. That's always going to be X equals h, and h is negative 3 over 2. So x equals negative 3 over 2. And indeed, that's right. So now, does this parabola, the graph of this, which is going to be a cupped up parabola, And I know that because 
this first term is positive. The vertex will be down at the bottom, which means it's a minimum point. Which means K is a minimum value, the minimum value the very lowest y-coordinate reached, okay? So k is uh, the minimum value is going to be, and you don't put y equals or k equals, you just put what k is, which is negative five over two. There. And now you use the graphing tool you plot the vertex first, and then any other point. And the best way to do that is with your calculator, because it is the easiest way. If it weren't, I would tell you. 2x squared. See what that is? 2x squared plus 6x plus 2. I tried to just overwrite it, but let us just hit clear and do it the easy way. 2x squared plus 6x plus 2. And then graph it. And that's what it looks like. Let me point out to you, this is your vertex. These are your x-intercepts, but we haven't found the x-intercepts. That's the y-intercept. It looks like two, but it might not be exactly two. But um, yeah, they might be fractions or they might be ugly, right? They might be like square roots. They're not complex numbers though. You only get complex numbers when you have this. I know it's going to yell at me. When you have that. When you have a parabola that never touches the x-axis, you're going to have complex conjugate zeros, which means you don't have any x-intercepts. I'm just trying to throw this out to help you remember. Okay, we just did three, and that's what your graph is going to look like. Remember to do the parabola first. The yellow banner that appears up here will tell you that. The, uh, the, uh, uh, you, you graph the vertex first, then you graph one other point. Warning. Yes, I'm bad. OK, show work. What happened to my work I already put up there, the cute little elephant? All right, all right. Yes, I'll show work. Damn, pushy. See, that's what's supposed to happen. Now it's happy with me, I can go on. All right. We haven't done one with a negative, let's do that. This is number five. Okay, f of x. Equals negative three x squared plus three x plus one. A is negative three. And B equals three. That's going to be the y intercept just so you know. 
Um, that could be your other point. And usually uh, the, the Y intercept is always going to be the number at the end, that number on the Y axis. So normally you don't even have to go out of your way to find another point. You find the vertex and then zero one, you're already given that, that's the number, the constant at the end. So this is cool. Okay, so we're going to find the vertex, which is HK. That's A. And H equals negative B over 2A. So it will equal negative 3 over 2 times negative Three. So you will get negative three, whoops, over negative six, which is positive one half. That's H. Oh, it agrees. I love it. Okay, K is going to be the number you get when you take H and put it in for every X in your original function. Okay, pull out your calculator and just put that in right there. No, but if you're going electronic, oh, there it is right there. Okay, okay. So negative three parentheses, one divided by two squared plus three parentheses, one divided by two plus one. Enter. And math frac. Math frac, yes. Math. Enter. Enter. Now I get seven fourths. What do they get? Seven fourths. Good. Okay. So your K is seven fourths. And so HK is going to be one half seven fourths. Now B is finding the axis of symmetry. That will always be X equals H which means you'll have X equals, I could have actually done this in the show work, but it won't let me go back and forth. So better to do it here. Um, H is one half, so our axis of symmetry will be X equals one half. Let's see if that's right. Yes, it is. Now notice, these instructions underneath that tells you you have to use integers or fractions. Integers are positive or negative whole whole numbers and fractions are fractions, positive or negative. Now, and in real life you wouldn't have graphed this yet, we're being asked does the function have a maximum or a minimum point? So we have to analyze this. The function, here's the leading term, the highest degree term. It's negative. So the parabola is cupped down. 
the vertex is at the top. which makes it a maximum point. Which means K is the max value. So K is 7 fourths, so we know that 7 fourths is the max value, the maximum value. And so here, when you graph this, you're automatically going to have two points. First, you graph the vertex. One half, seven fourths. And the other point, is that point right there, which is one on the uh, on the y axis, zero one, if you write it as a point. So see, you don't even have to look in your calculator if you don't want to, although I believe it's always a very good idea to graph what you're about to graph, just to look at it. Clear. Negative three X squared plus three X plus one. Graph. There it is. In fact, if you do that in the beginning, it can just make your work easier because you have a mental image of what you're dealing with. So how you would do this, you would click on that point for the vertex, then you would click on one on the Y axis as your other point, and boom, you're done. Now it's going to tell me to show work. So I'll show work. See, that's an eraser I can erase. Um, Pi, what does pi do? Oh, gives me a little box. Oh, I could type a pi if I wanted to. Okay. Um, what is this? Ah, colors. That lets you upload a photo. Oh, how about me, wonderful me? Ah, smiley. Okay, what is this? This is a box. No, that's just another one of those. I think it's a box, though. There. And then there's a trash can for things you want to get rid of. This will delete all work. We don't want to do that. No, no. Um, maybe we do, looking at the picture. No, I'm going to save it. So it won't yell at me. I hate it when machines yell at me. Sorry, an error has occurred. OK, I'll be sure to tell them. All right, so we continue doing the same kind of thing. Thank you. I do want to move on. And then you have not shown your work. Yes, these problems are all exactly the same. So do you feel better about them? You don't have to show work. Apparently it grades you anyway, but if you want to just to make it shut up, do what I did. Yeah. And save it and move on. And if you find it's not giving you a grade, then do it over again and upload your work, upload pictures of your work or scans, however you want to do it, 
you can upload it there. You see, it seems to me that would be if I if I can get it working right all the time. That that would be a great way to have students show their work on exams. It would make it much easier for me because I wouldn't be have to have to be flipping back and forth. But I don't know. Anyway, now you know how to do it, though. Discussion about this. As I said in in the announcement I made, this is yet another one of my great ideas gone wrong. Oh well, I'm using. Do you feel more confident about that now? Yes, definitely. Well, I hope everybody does. Um, I'm going to put this in all of my college algebra classes. Everybody in every college algebra class. I'm teaching six college algebra classes, and people in every single class have said they have problems with the analyze functions. Uh, analyze quadratic functions. So this is all that the computer is asking for. It's not asking for rocket science. So there you go. And this is shorter than the class video. This is only about 45 minutes.